Welcome back. Welcome to the PicksWise NFL Show. I'm Rachel Von Waranya, and as always, I am joined by my lovely co-host, Coach Jeff Reinbold. And uh, he and myself, we're going to give you the best bets, picks, and parlays of Week 14 in the NFL. And stay there, because later on in the show, we're going to be joined by Delvin Bro, formerly of the New Orleans Saints. Some great insight there, a little bit about his story, and some really good picks from a dude who played the game himself. Now, before we get started, I just want to let you know that the PicksWise NFL show, it's both on YouTube and Spotify. Be sure to follow, like, share, subscribe, leave comments below wherever you can, and be sure to follow PicksWise on all your favorite social media platforms and go to www.pickswise.com for all your sports betting needs. All right, so let's go ahead and get into what happened last week with our picks. Jeff, let's review our picks, okay? It was a good week. It was a good week for you. Uh, you went three and one against the spread. I was two and two on the totals, and we both went two and two, and both of our underdogs won. Man, we are so good at the underdogs. I just gotta say, all right, I'm I'm feeling really good about that. Are you ready to get in week 14? Jeff? Let's jump right in because we got some big ones this week. I mean, big ones. We got some really big ones. All right, Jeff, let's talk about an early game, 1 p.m. Eastern time. We're gonna have the Chiefs at the Dolphins. And, you know, Super Bowl champions, the Chiefs, they're 11 and 1, headed into Miami to take on the Dolphins, who are sitting pretty at 8 and 4 in their division. As of Wednesday, that's today, the day we filmed the show, the Chiefs are favored by 7.5 points, and the point total is 48.5. So the Chiefs beat the Broncos. They were 13.5 point favorites. They only won by six points, though. I think people, obviously, Vegas, thought there would be a much bigger victory there. Okay, Travis Kelsey, he went for 136 yards and a touchdown. They moved on to 11 and 1. Now, the Dolphins, just like Big O said they would, they won convincingly. They covered their 11 and a half point spread to win 19 to 7. It was their sixth game this year, winning by double digits. Big O did call all of that. Jeff, two red hot teams. Can the Dolphins cover 7 and a half here? And can they win? Well, Let me know, Jeff. What's up? The thing that, the thing that, you know, you got to look at it with the Dolphins. And I mean, like, when you look at this last five weeks, they've played as good as defense as anybody has in the National Football League. And I think uh, Brian Flores has that team confident. They're physically tough. They're very, very, very well coached on all three facets of the game. I, I really think the Dolphins, while I don't think they'll win this game, I think they will get inside of that seven and a half point spread. And uh, again, I think that the, that it's in Miami. Uh, obviously, you saw a little bit of a struggle last week, Kansas City, and the Dolphins went down. And, you know, took care of business in in Cincinnati. So I like the Dolphins in this game. This is a very very good football team and playing very well right now. Yeah, they are playing very very well. Um, but you know what? With with Tua, there there might be some issues passing the ball there. So for the for the Dolphins to win this game, they're going to have to do the only flaw that Kansas City has that I think if you were to nitpick at them and pick what flaws that they have like defensively, it would be against the run. The Dolphins are going to have to really succeed at running the ball here, control the clock, limit turnovers, you know the drill. Um, I don't think that it's going to happen for them. I think that the Chiefs cover seven and a half. It's, it's December. The Chiefs are about to go into playoff mode. I think it's over for them. Uh, the Dolphins lose, and I think they lose handily. Now, what do you think about the point total there, Jeff? The point total is at 48 and a half, too high or too low? I think it's I think it's too high. I think you know again, Kansas City is better defensively than people give them credit for, and I think again you made a good point about Tua. I think they'll try and mitigate the risk offensively, and you know play close to the vest. So I, I think it's going to be a, a you know underneath. It'll be an underscore. Yeah, I'm going to go with the over here only because I think that the Chiefs are you going to score a lot. You love that over, girl. You are. I love the you over. love the over. I do. And I don't know if it's just wishful thinking. <laughs> Maybe I just love offense and I just want more points on the board. I don't know. But it's just that woman's instinct that you claim is infallible. It is. That instinct says the Chiefs score a lot of points in this game. It's over over it's over for the dolphins and it's the over on the point <laughs> title all right all right well let us know in the comments below what you think you got the chiefs or the dolphins 
You know, one of the greatest things about being in coaching is the people that you meet, the teammates, the coaches. I'm, a, I'm a here to introduce you to a special, special guy today. He is a former Saint and all NFL rookie performer, Delvin Bro. And Delvin is a guy, if you think Alex Smith's story is great, and it is, Delvin has a story that is probably one that Hollywood wouldn't even write. And uh, he's joining us today. We're going to talk a little football. We're going to talk his story, and we're going to talk a book that he has coming out. So welcome, Delvin Bro. How you doing, Dave? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Coach, appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Well, I, wanted, I want you to, in your own words, Delvin, uh, take our viewers through your story from the time you were in high school and what happened to you in high school. Uh, yeah, so it was uh, October 26, um, uh, October 27, excuse me, 2006. I was playing against Jesuit High School, um, and, and we was going on kickoff. Um, I was at the, I want to say, the L1. And uh, left hand side of the field, and man, when my uh, kicker kicked the ball off, man, I shot out of there like a cannon. Um, you know, I, I didn't think you know nothing significant was going to happen. You know, I had LSU scouts in the stand. You know, I had you know, one of the, the best first halves that you can ever have as a corner. Um, and and you know, I, I didn't think nothing significant was going to happen. So, um, and also, I wanted to show my LSU coaches that you know I, I can not just play cornerback; I can play special teams as well. And uh, so as I'm running down there between the uh, 17 and 23 yard line is where I, I made my collision. Uh, I ran in there. The returner was Peyton Jason. He was running and I came from the side and like I dove in. I closed my eyes and I dove in there like I didn't, I didn't drop my head. I, I, I just dove in there, but I closed my eyes and as his knee was lifting. My head caught right on his knee and it jacked my neck back. And uh, man, ne next thing you know, everything was just dark. You know, everything went went dark. Um, I, I hear my teammate, uh, Terrence Moore, uh, he's like, hey, D-Bro, get up, man. We need you. And and it's like I can hear them, but I I, it, I can't respond. So it, it, as I'm trying to respond back to them, like, yeah, man, I'm crying. But I, you know, it's like everything is going into the shallows, you know, like everything is just going out. And then within a few seconds, I saw this bright white light. And um, it, it, it's something I can't explain. You know, it, it was just this bright white light. Um, what I try to refer it to is um, uh, Bruce Almighty, um, whenever uh, Morgan Freeman was inside the um, this room and he made it go all white. Um, and, and that's what him and Jim Carrey, that, that's what I can explain. It was just an all white uh, a picture. And within a few seconds, uh, my coach came, gave me smelling salt and it was like, you all right? I'm like, yes, coach. He's like, all right, well, let's get up. And next thing you know, man, I got up off my own power and you know, I got walked off the field, took my own helmet off, walked off the field. And, you know, in high school, you have to have um, one or two plays you have to sit out. So as I'm sitting on the sideline, I'm, I'm jumping up and down, ready to get back in the game. And that's when I feel this excruciating pain or the sharp pain shoot up the back of my neck. And the first thing I did was uh, I turned around and I saw my dad. And I went and walked over there to my dad. I told my dad, I said, something is bothering me back here. So they set me down on the bench. They gave me ibuprofen which I couldn't swallow the ibuprofen because my, you know, come to find out my disc was slipped in my esophagus, right? And uh, so that's what was causing the pain and stuff uh, of me not being able to swallow. So I had to cough the pills up. So after that moment, that's when everything just started shooting. Like, like man, just excruciating pain. And I told my dad, I said, Dad, get the ambulance. Something's wrong. Like, something is wrong. But I did it in a calm, cool, collective matter, man. It, it, you know, as if nothing was, you know, wrong but a stinger, right? So... They came and got me, put me on a stretcher, and they took me to the ambulance. Now, you broke your neck, and the doctors obviously were concerned about your being able to survive, first of all. And, you know, obviously they, they told you very quickly that your days of playing football were over. You went to LSU. LSU honored your scholarship. You went to LSU but would never, you were never allowed to play at LSU because they wouldn't pass you because of your neck. And we were able to, to, to get you past the physical and you came and played for two years in the CFL. And then lo and behold, when you're a free agent, you signed with, back with your hometown team and you went back and, and made it in the NFL with the Saints. Delvin, 
tell us what that journey was like, you know, to go from being told you'll never play football again, you may never walk again, to being on an NFL field and being mm-hmm. out there playing against Julio Jones and uh, every one of the great receivers that you were able to, you know, glove up. Yeah, man. Um, you, you know, the exciting thing about this whole journey was, um, you know, my doc, when my doctor walked in and, uh, you know, t- he, he told me, how am I alive, Def? Um, he told me, how am I alive? How are you right here talking to me? You're supposed to be dead on that field. There's no way you're alive right now talking to me. And whenever I was getting discharged, uh, Jeff, he was saying, uh, I asked him, is uh, football out of the question for me? Would, would football be, you know, out of my future? He looked at me. And he said, send me Super Bowl tickets when you make it to the Super Bowl. Come on, Jeff. You know, and, and for a 17-year-old kid hearing a message like that, man, that stuck with me, Jeff. That's why I continue to keep grinding, Jeff. I couldn't give up, man, because I knew I had to fulfill this message. I had to fulfill this dream. I had to go get Super Bowl tickets, Jeff. I was not going to stop. I was not going to quit. I was too determined to, to get these Super Bowl tickets, Jeff. And look, Jeff, he didn't say get them. Why? Why I was playing, Jeff? So if, if the Saints make it to when the Saints make it to the Super Bowl this year, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some tickets, man, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna find him and I'm gonna take him to a Super Bowl game, man, and <laughs> hopefully we can make this happen, man. So um, you know, I I think it's big and Jeff yeah, being able to play on the on the big 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 platform against Julio Jones and you know Ty Hilton, Odell Beckham, and, and, and Ben Roethlisberger, Antonio Brown, man, it is. It, was a tremendous honor, man. Um, I, I had to make the best of it, right? Um, and that's what I did, Jeff. Day in and day, I, I didn't care how how uh, hurt my body was. I didn't care how tired I was, man. I had to get up every day and grind because it was a, a purpose that I had to fulfill. And I fulfilled that purpose, man. Um, and, and I think it's amazing. Well, Delvin, let's let's uh, let's talk about something that you've done this off season, which I think is really fabulous. You've written a book. Tell us about your book, if you will, and uh, and and how can our viewers get a copy of your book? Well, first you can you can get a copy of my book on uh, Amazon. I just uh, became a published author last night, so I'm uh, I'm thankful for that. Um, so my book would be out uh, midday today, um, or you know later tonight. Um, so you can check that out uh, there on Amazon.com. Uh, you can find it as uh, Unbroken U uh, N Bro B R E A U X. K E N uh, on Amazon, and uh, yeah, the reason why I'm writing this book is is um, is, is, is to impact the uh, the lives of, of a lot of us, God, uh, uh, Jeff. We we really need it, um, you know, especially with this time we have going on. I, I thought it was um, right to write my book to bring some um, inspiring messages to uh, a, a lot of people, and um, you know, going through uh, physical abuse, trauma, um, and abuse and all that growing up um, it, it, that's what molded me um into the person i am till this day yeah um i'm very thankful and um like i said it's gonna be an amazing book it's gonna talk about my journey from uh, my childhood you know me breaking my neck um through me going out uh, committing suicide in college to overcoming that to uh making it uh what six years after not playing football to back playing football and playing every um what level i played every level jeff um, and, and to making it to being the highest paid cornerback in the CFL. So I, I think it's amazing. It is an amazing story. And any anybody who wants inspiration or you know of somebody that needs inspiration, get this book. It is a fabulous, fabulous book. D, as a, as a member of Who Dat Nation since you were a small kind of kid and then going on and playing with the Saints, when you look at this Saints team right now, 8-0 without Drew Brees. How complete is this Saints team, and how far do you think they can go in the playoffs? You, you, you know what, man? We, we, we're, we're, just, we're just this close to being a very complete team, uh, Jeff. You know, we still have a little uh, mistakes we make in there, but once we clean up those mistakes as far as penalties and allowing the big play over the top, Jeff, I, I think we're going to be fine because – you rely on your defense and your secondary, right? Um, that's what I was told my whole career. You know, the secondary is, is the leader of the team because um, we eliminate all balls going over the top. Um, so um, I, I, I think, man, it's, uh, uh, I, I think the Saints are going to do well, man. Um, we're this close to being complete. Well, let's talk Sunday night football. On Sunday night, two AFC teams, two of the better AFC teams are going to battle. And these may be teams that the Saints – could play in the Super Bowl. We're talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers, who are 11 and one. 
against the Bills. I think they're 9-3. and three. They just come off of a big win. They're at home against the Steelers. How do you see this one, Delvin? You know, man, listen to me. The defense is going to have to play. Um, you know, they've been playing well. I, I think the defense is going to really have to um, make a difference in, in, these, um, in, in this matchup coming up. Um, but I, I like the Bills. Um, I, I like my guy Tredavious White on the corner out there, matched up against anybody, man. Um, so I, I love the Bills in this one. Um, and, and, yeah, I'm going to go with the Bills. Now, again, this game started with the Steelers' favorites, and then after the Steelers lost last night and the Bills won, the Bills are now two-and-a-half-point favorites. Can they win by three, you think? It's going to be tough, Jeff. Um, it's going to be really tough, but the way Josh Allen put enough points, yes. Um, I, I, I believe they can win by three. How many points do you think these two teams are going to score, D? Uh... And I, I think this one is going to be a shootout. Um, I, I think this is going to be a shootout. Um, I, I think both teams are going to combine um, at least over 45 to 50 points. Okay, so you heard it here from former NFL rookie, all-rookie team member Delvin Bro of the New Orleans Saints. He says, take the Bills and take the over on the Sunday night football game. I'm taking the Bills, but I'm taking the under. <laughs> Delvin, it's been a blast. It's been a blast having you. Good luck with the book. Thanks you for uh, giving a little insight to our viewers. And again, hopefully we'll get you on again one time. Yes, sir, Jeff. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, brother. All right, guys. It's time for the Pixwise Parlay of the Week. We're going to give you some bets that we feel really good about, and hopefully you can build a parlay around it, make some money, help us make some money. You know the drill. All right, I'm going to get us started. I'm going to give us two picks this week, okay? Just going to give us one. I'm going to start off with the Houston Texans. I'm taking them to beat the Chicago Bears. And you all know that I hate betting on anything that involves the Chicago Bears. It's been our story all year. I don't like to do it. I don't feel comfortable doing it. But with that being said, Deshaun Watson last week, Lost the game in a heartbreaking fashion. It was a it was a muff uh, snap, okay? And you saw Deshaun Watson crying on the football field. And here's what I know. When, it, when your quarterback is a badass like Deshaun Watson, and then he cries over a regular season game in a season where nothing matters anymore for your franchise or for your team, and you're just out there playing to play, and your quarterback still cries, that shows me that this man – loves to win. He genuinely cares about winning. He's not satisfied by just making the huge paycheck that he did. And whenever your quarterback is Deshaun Watson and he cries on the field, you have to come back the next week and win the damn game. It's going to happen. The Texans are going to win this game. Okay, my second pick for the Pixwise Parlay is going to be... Who say? Oh, the Jets. I have the Jets right now on my screen. They're 13 and a half point dogs to the Seattle Seahawks. And here's what I know. The Seahawks defense is garbage, okay? Absolute garbage. And the other thing I know is that teams really like to win games after their head coach gets fired. And the Jets head coach just got fired. And the Seahawks defense sucks. So I think everything is just primed and the stars have aligned for the New York Jets. They're not going to win this game, okay? The Seahawks, they, Russ ain't going down like that. Ain't happening. But they will cover 13 and a half points. It's going to be closer than Vegas thinks it will. I have the Texans and the Jets. Jeff, what you got? Well, I'm going to I'm gonna say I don't think I saw any tears out of Teddy Bridgewater last week, but I still think that Carolina is going to win their game against Denver. Drew Locke has struggled. The offense in Denver has struggled. Uh, I, they're playing at Carolina. McCaffrey should play. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater is a upper half of the NFL quarterback. I think that Carolina is a very well-coached team. Uh, I think Denver's starting to unravel a little bit, so I'm going to take Carolina at home. I like your picks. I like your picks. Um, I don't like the Panthers, but I like your picks. <laughs> All right, there you have it. Picks-wise parlay of the week. We got the Texans. I got the Jets covering. And Jeff has Teddy in the Carolina Panthers. Let us know in the comments below what you think. All right, guys, it's time for the PicksWise Underdog of the Week. And this has by far been our most successful segment, okay? Jeff's kicking butt. I started off kicking butt. I'm trying to weasel my way back in there. But we can definitely help you guys make some money with our favorite underdogs 
of week 14 in the NFL. I'm going to go ahead and just from the jump, I'm going to pick somebody that I almost picked last week, and sure enough, they covered. I'm going to pick them this week, okay, because the Tennessee Titans let me down. In the Jacksonville Jaguars or the London Jaguars, depending on who on the show you want to talk to, uh, the Jags are seven and a half point dogs to the Titans, okay? Look, Jacksonville, they're playing for the jobs right now, okay? Everybody's trying to make sure they get signed somewhere next season. The Jags are seven and a half point dogs. Come to find out, whenever they play better teams than them, they tend to play up to the level of competition that they're playing. They haven't really been blown out by really good teams yet this season. And so I'm going to take the Jaguars because the Titans, they let me down last week. And they showed me that they're going to let Baker Mayfield have the best game of his entire career in the NFL on them at home. So I just don't have a whole lot of faith in them anymore. The Jaguars, they can run the ball. They can throw the ball with Glenn. They can do it all. So why not? Why not the Jags? Okay, they're not the Jags, just another guy, Jags. They're the London Jaguars, and they're going to cover. What you got, Jeff? I tell you what, uh, I'm going back to, as you described them, my Giants. For a team that's playing extremely good defense right now, Wayne Gallman ran the ball very, very well last week at Seattle. Now, again, I I understand that's at Seattle. Uh, Daniel Jones should be back. Uh, So, again, I think that the Giants right now are a team that's hot. They're a team that's playing for an awful lot. Arizona has has really, other than the the Hale Murray play against Buffalo, if he had not made that play, you're talking about a team that's in absolute free fall, losing three straight. So I think this is a chance for the Giants to get healthy. Phoenix has to make the toughest trip you can make, which is west to east across three time zones. They're playing in New York in bad weather. I like everything about this one. It all tells me that the Giants are going to not only cover, they'll beat the Cardinals. Oh my goodness. Well, first and foremost, nobody knows more about jet lag and traveling across (laughs) time zones than you do, Jeff. But that is a very, very bold prediction. And we have seen the Arizona Cardinals play down to levels of competition, but the thing about the Giants is they're not so down anymore. I believe in your Giants, and so I love this pick. All right, there you have it, the Picks Wise Underdogs of the Week. I have the, who did I pick? I have the Jaguars, that's right, the Jaguars, and Jeff has putting all of his faith in his Giants. There you go, Picks Wise Parlay of the Week. Let us know in the comments below which thing. All right, Jeff, Thursday night football. I think it's gonna be a good one for once, thankfully. Uh, We have the Patriots, and they are headed to L.A. to take on the Rams. Actually, they're staying in L.A. because they've been in L.A. this whole time. Uh, It's a rematch of Super Bowl 53. If you remember that game, it was pretty ugly, 13-3. to Now, as of Wednesday, today, the Rams are favored by 5.5 points, and the point total set at 44.5. The Patriots, wow, they ran all over the Chargers. Bill Belichick is 20 to five against rookies. Okay. He don't lose to rookies and he showed us that last week. The Patriots, they're finally getting some going. They've still faced a very uphill battle to make the playoffs. They're currently sitting at plus 490 to make the postseason. The Rams, they got back on track in the NFC West, beating the Cardinals 38 to 28, and they now sit atop their division after that Seahawks loss. Jeff. Are the Rams winning this game by five and a half points, or is Bill Belichick going to find yet another way to shut down Jared Goff and Sean McVay, just like he did in Super Bowl 53? Well, I think he's going to make it real tough on McVay and and Jared Goff and the whole Rams offense, but the reality of it is this is a game McVay's had circled on his calendar for a long time. I think this is payback game for him. There's a lot to play for. They're at home. They've played extremely well in that stadium. I think they're four and one on their home field. Uh, obviously the Patriots have found the, their answer, and that's to run the football. But again, now we're talking about you're running into a defensive line led by Aaron Donald. Um, you look at the last two weeks, I don't think the Patriots have uh, passed for over 100 yards in either of those two games. I just don't know if you can win in today's NFL that way. Their special teams have been outstanding. But again, the Rams will be ready for that. You're not going to see Gunnar Olszewski running punt returns back against this football team. So again, I, th- I like the Rams in this one. I'm a little bit leery of the five and a half point spread, but I do like the Rams. And I think again, it'll, I'll take the under in this one. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going with the Rams as well. 
Uh, the Patriots aren't going to get away in this game with passing for 60, 70 yards. And you generally just don't have that much success running all over the Rams. A dude like Jalen Ramsey is going to have a very, very easy day because it's like, who does he need to cover? Who knows? He'll probably, they can use him blitzing if they want to. You know what I mean? I think this is going to be uh, payback for Sean McVay for sure. Definitely go with you on the Rams. Uh, the points on I'm going with the under as well, just because the Patriots, I don't think they're going to score that many points in this game, so it's going to limit them. So there you go. Jeff and I agree. You ha- We both have the Rams, and we're both taking the under in this game. Let us know in the comments below what you think. All right, Jeff, Monday Night Football. It's going to be a good one, I think. We have the Ravens traveling to Cleveland. Little AFC North matchup. We got the Ravens and the Browns. Now, look, we just recently on Tuesday Night Football, we got to watch the Ravens run the ball down the Cowboys' throats, which I think everybody and their mom knew they were going to do. Uh, almost 300 yards running the ball for that team. And Lamar Jackson, we saw we saw good parts of, of Lamar, and we also saw some stuff where you're like, okay, you missed a throw there, you missed a throw there. Another dude who we're used to saying that with is Baker Mayfield of the Browns. But look, Baker Mayfield, he's changed the narrative that surrounds him right now in 2020, okay? He threw... For 334 yards, four passing touchdowns, and wait for it, wait for it, zero interceptions, Jeff. Okay, Baker Mayfield threw no interceptions. He had a stellar game for any quarterback, okay? Are the Browns for real, Jeff? And do they, if they are, I mean, do they stand a chance of beating the Ravens? This is a huge game for both teams. How do you see this one going? Well, it's in Cleveland, so obviously they've got a chance, and and they're playing very, very well. Kevin Stefanski's done an outstanding job with that Cleveland whole organization. Uh, Miles Garrett is back. He got a sack again. He, you know, he's he's probably, he and Aaron Donald are the two most dominant pass rushers in the National Football League right now. They've got a great running game. They've got maybe the best offensive line in football. Um, I think this is going to be a really interesting game. Now, remember when we talk about Baltimore, Baltimore two weeks ago lost, you know, a seven-point game to the Steelers playing basically their junior varsity squad. It was a bunch of practice roster guys because of COVID just came in and absolutely devastated them. Lamar's back again. The COVID guys are back again. So I think the I think the uh, Ravens are at full strength, and you know having that time off has really helped those guys. I think because they're healthier now than than they've been. So I'm going to take the Ravens in this one. I, I know that Cleveland's hot; they're a very hot football team. But I just really think that the Ravens will come in and physically pound on the Browns. And uh, and again, Baker, if he can keep his streak alive at the end of this one, if we say there's four more quarters of no turning it over, then I'm going to tell you, take that prop bet because I don't think there's any way he won't turn it over in this game. Yeah, Jeff, no, I'm taking the Browns in this game. And right now, as of Wednesday, it is a pick em, okay? It is a pick em. So Vegas thinks these two teams are pretty evenly matched. But I actually see it differently. I think that the Ravens, I'm sorry, I think that the Browns have a better all-around roster. The Ravens, they're not going to be able to run for almost 300 yards on, on the Browns' defense, okay? This ain't the Cowboys. And I'm telling you, I know I know. shoulda, coulda, wouldas, all things aside. Look, if Greg Zerline makes three missed kicks last night, and if the referee quits ball watching and is actually watching his jurisdiction and calls a pass interference that happened on CeeDee Lamb, we might be talking about a different game versus the Cowboys, okay? I don't think that the, the final score was indicative of the way that the Ravens played. In my opinion, they were underachieving. And look, there's also this little caveat to throw in there, okay? Des Bryant gets yanked from the game yesterday right before it starts, but he's out on the field before shaking hands, kissing babies, all that good stuff right before the game starts, and then they yank him off the field because he failed a COVID test. If it turns out that that wasn't a false negative and that he actually had it, look for a lot of other teammates to probably have it as well. So who knows how many people are going to be missing from this game? I don't know. I don't like it. It's a lot of distractions. I think they're underachieving. I'm taking the Browns in this game. What do you feel about the point total? It's at 45 and a half. Well, first of all, before we get to the point uh, total, all right, you gave me a lot of hypothetical situations in there. So I know this. If if your grandmother had a beard, she'd be your grandpa, too. So (laughs) don't don't give me that stuff. (laughs) It's true. I, when I worked with Sean Salisbury and I, I threw out hypotheticals on our radio show, he used to say the same thing. He would grill me about my <laughs> ifs, ands, coulds, buts, what's. 
So I hear you on that one. Now, how do you feel about the point total? Uh, 45 and a half. You know what? I, I, I think this is one of those, you know, divisional games that's going to be really physical and it's going to be a lot of run the football. And this is, you know, again, that Ravens defense is pretty good. And, you know, obviously the, the Browns defense has improved under Joe Woods this year. Tremendous amount. So I think I'm going to go the under on this one. I know you love the overs, but I'm going to take the under. You nailed it. I love the over in this game. Well, I initially, you know, with the Cowboys Ravens game, I didn't even think that the Cowboys were going to score a single point. I saw a lot of good things come out of them. And I'll tell you whose offense is significantly better than the Cowboys right now. It's the Browns. I think points will be scored on Monday night. I'm taking the over. There you have it. Jeff has the under. I have the over as usual. He's got the Ravens though. And I, I'm a new believer. I'm a, I'm a Baker Stan. I believe in the Browns. Let us know in the comments below what you think. All right, everybody, it's time for our PicksWise Lock of the Week. Pretty self-explanatory. This is a bet that we are almost promising you is going to happen. Hopefully, you can fit in one of your parlays, or you can just make some money off of it in some way, shape, or form, okay? I'll go ahead and get us started, and I'll, I'll tell you what. This week was really hard for me to pick a lock. It's late in the season. There's been crazy things happening, especially with last week, so many upsets. Uh, but the one thing that I'm feeling really confident about is the Buccaneers. And there have been times before in this season where I felt very confident about the Buccaneers and they let me down. But the Minnesota Vikings defensively is just atrocious. And the Buccaneers are at home. And the Buccaneers have to win this game because the Saints are basically the best team in the league in the NFC South sitting right there with or without Drew Brees. This is a game that the Buccaneers cannot lose. They know they cannot lose it. They don't want no more smoke from the national media. Bruce Arians and Tom Brady, they have to figure out whatever the heck is going wrong down there, and they're going to get right against the Minnesota Vikings, okay? Jeff, what you got for us? I'm going to tell you what. I, I like the Packers over the Lions, and this, this Packer team needs to win this football game to clinch a playoff spot. So I like the Packers. I think the Packers are playing extremely well. They're very healthy. The Lions got a little bump last week after the firing of Matt Patricia. I think they come back to reality this week. And again, it was the Bears, the Bears that they beat last the week. The Bears. Remember, the Bears, not the Packers, the Bears. So I'm going to take the Pack. I love, I love your pick there, Jeff. There you have it. That's our lock of the week. Jeff's got the Packers and I got the Bucks. All right, two of the GOATs of our generation. Let us know in the comments below what you think. And Jeff, we're gonna wrap it up today, but it was so nice of you to join us in HD. <laughs> Finally, the guy, we had to fly you to England to get you in HD, but I digress, it happened. Great show today, great show with Delvin Bro as well. It's always fun with you, OJ, and we gotta get you over here across the pond and, and we do this live. I've already applied for my passport. Now we just got to <laughs> convince PixWise to cough up the money for that plane ticket because I'm sure it ain't cheap. But I would love to come out there and uh, hang with you guys. All right. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the PixWise NFL show, our week 14 preview. As always, we will be back next week with a week 15 preview. All the best bets, picks, and parlays that there are to be. Guys, remember. Please gamble responsibly, and thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate it.